Hi everyone and welcome to my video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the chart of accounts within QuickBooks Online. So the chart of accounts is the lifeblood of any bookkeeping and accounting system. So just like the blood that runs through our veins that keeps us alive, that is how I compare the chart of accounts to any accounting system. So the term account refers to the category that you use to record a specific transaction. So for example, let's say um, you, you paid rent and now you want to record the rent in your QuickBooks, in your QuickBooks um, software. You record rent, rent is an expense, and you're going to record the rent in an account called rent expense. In addition to that, if you receive revenue, you're going to record revenue in an income account. You may have several income accounts. You may decide that you want to track your income very specifically. So you may want to track product service, product sales separately. You might want to track highlights separately. You might want to tra track haircuts separately. You might want to track by a large separately. So all of these are um, in individual accounts. So when you receive revenue for that particular service, you are going to record the revenue in that account. And also if you pay insurance, you are going to record the insurance in an insurance expense account. So that's the definition or rather that's the meaning of an account as it relates to your accounting or your, and your bookkeeping system. So when you initially purchase a QuickBooks online, an online account, QuickBooks sets up a generic chart of accounts that is based on the industry that you select when you first sign up. So if you select, say, the construction industry, they're going to include some generic accounts that are related to that particular industry. If you choose, let's say, hair salons or the beauty business, they are going to include certain accounts that, make, that are specific to the beauty industry. Now, some of these accounts might be very generic. So it just depends on the, the listing that QuickBooks Online has available at that time. So as a hairstylist or hair salon, there are certain accounts that are unique to our industry. So what I've done is I have created a chart of accounts with accounts that are specific to the beauty industry. All you have to do is to download a copy of the spreadsheet that came with this video and upload it directly into your QuickBooks account. Now, before you upload the spreadsheet to your QBO account, make sure to remove any duplicate accounts that are already that are in the spreadsheet that are already in within QuickBooks Online. So within the spreadsheet, when you go through it, there may be some accounts on here that are also uh, present in your, your QBO system. So you might want to remove those particular accounts. Now you can also add any account to the spreadsheet that you think you might need. So before you actually upload the spreadsheet to QuickBooks Online, think, think about it and see if there are any accounts that you might want to add to the spreadsheet. And you can do that before uploading it into QuickBooks Online. So now I'm gonna show you how to upload the spreadsheet into your QuickBooks Online account. Okay, so here is a spreadsheet that I created for the salon and the beauty industry. Now, most of the, as you can see, most of the accounts are expense accounts and I have a few income accounts. So let me first start by explaining to you how this whole thing is set up. So we have account number, account name, type, and detail type. For account number, you can use account numbers if you choose to when you're setting up accounts in QuickBooks Online. I like to use account numbers sometimes, sometimes I don't. Now, for my nonprofit, side of my business, I usually use account numbers. When I'm dealing with salons and beauty and stylists, I may or I may not use account numbers. Now, the good thing about account numbers, sometimes it's easier to find an account when you use account numbers, but it can get a bit muddy and messy, especially if you start to create sub accounts. So in this case, I'm just going to leave that off. But just keep in mind that if you want to use account numbers, you can do so and you can include them here so that when you upload it into QuickBooks Online, the account numbers automatically show up. Then you have the account name. This is one of the most important aspects of the chart of accounts. Because remember when I said to you that when you have a transaction 
you include it in a specific account. So remember I said, if for example, booth rent, when your um, stylist pays you booth rent, they're going to record the rent in the booth rental account. So the account names, these are the accounts where you're going to record all of your transactions. So you, you want to make sure that the, the accounts under account name are very specific. Now, I just chose some accounts that do not really exist in QuickBooks Online, but are very specific to our industry. For example, with equipment, I just in, I put it in parentheses because in QuickBooks Online, you do have equipment. However, I wanted to be more specific with hair dryers, irons, clippers, scissors, ETC. These are the, the equipments that we use to work. And of course, equipment repair, if your blow dryer goes bad or if you need to fix your shears, then that's what equipment repair is for. Then I have client gifts. For those of you that give gifts to your clients, cleaning ex expense for washing towels or dry cleaning. If you have to purchase soap to wash your towels or if you get them dry cleaned, then I have salon capes and aprons, seminars and webinars, and of course, shampoo assistant, because some of us have shampoo assistants. And then of course, towels, we all need towels to survive. Towels is like the lifeblood of a salon, just like the chart of accounts is like the lifeblood of um, any accounting system. But anyway, so these are what the accounts are made up of. And then we have type. Type just means what type of transaction is it? So booth rental income, haircuts, color, highlights, those are all income accounts. So that's what the type means. And then you, everything else underneath income are expenses. Then of course I have petty cash because Usually you may want to run to the store and purchase something really quickly. You may, you may run out of color or you may run out of gloves or you may run out of clips and you might want to, excuse me, run to the store to purchase something. So that is where you, the, petty, the petty account or rather the petty cash account comes in. And the petty cash account is a current asset. So while everything else on here is either an income and expense, which, which flow to the profit and loss statement, the current asset, the, I mean, the petty cash is a current asset account, and that normally flows to the balance sheet. And also for haircuts, or rather for, for color and for highlights, if you decide you want to track color and highlights even further, you can actually create sub accounts inside of QuickBooks Online. So let's say you do partial highlights and you do full you do full highlights, but you want to keep track of your partial highlight income and you want to keep track of your full head highlight income. You can create sub accounts inside of QuickBooks Online to further break down the highlight income account. So that way you know exactly what's coming in for partials, you know exactly what's coming in for full head. Then also you can have a buy, you can have a buy large account that way you know what's coming in for that particular service. Now, detail type is one of those throwaway accounts. I don't really know why it exists, but it does. And sometimes I think the reason why they included the detail type in QuickBooks Online is to help people figure out a, a name for a particular type of service. So really the detail type, so either you're going to use detail type or you are going to use an account name. Okay, now the reason why I just put other primary income and I put other business income for detail type is because it means nothing. I just needed to fill it, fill it up because in order for us to upload this spreadsheet into QuickBooks Online, the detail type has to be filled out. So even though I filled it out, please ignore it. It doesn't mean anything. When you upload the spreadsheet, you are going to see it, but it doesn't mean anything. The account name is what shows up on all of your financials. So the account name is going to show up on your profit and loss statement or your balance sheet. So that's all you're going to see. You are not going to see the detail type on your PL statement or on your balance sheet. So it doesn't really count for anything. Okay. So now that we've looked at this and I've explained to you what the chart of accounts is about, now let's go ahead and look at how we would import it into QuickBooks Online. Oh, but before we do that, remember, if you want to add an account, you can go ahead and just add an account here. Now, when you add the account, 
just make sure whatever you're adding doesn't already exist in QuickBooks Online. So if there is a particular service or a particular expense that you do not see on this spreadsheet and it doesn't exist in QuickBooks Online, you can just go ahead and add it here. So you're going to add the account name. So let's say all of these under account name are going to go to the PL statement, as I said. So if it's an expense, just add the account name under the account name column. And then if it's an expense, you just type in expenses. If it's an income, you just type in income. And then for detail type, just follow what I did here. For all of the expense accounts, I just used other business expense. So when you upload everything into QuickBooks Online, it's going to show up. Okay, so now let's see what we need to do to actually upload this into QuickBooks Online. So when you first sign into QuickBooks Online, you're likely going to land on the main dashboard screen. So we, what we want to do now is we want to upload the chart of accounts into QuickBooks Online. So we're going to click on accounting and then chart of accounts. Now there are two ways to add an account into QuickBooks. You can either add a single account by clicking new. When you click, when you click new, you're going to click on the account type. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to choose the detail type, which remember I said detail type really, really isn't important. It's what goes here. That's important. The name, the actual account name. So you can either in, you can either singly include an account or you can use the spreadsheet. Now, when you are creating sub accounts, remember how I said you can create a sub account for highlights. You might want to break out highlights between full head and partial. So this is where you will do that. So once you upload all of the accounts, then you will come in here and you will start to break all the main accounts down into, into any sub account that you want. But for now, let's go, let's go ahead and just import the chart of accounts that I created. So we're going to click on an arrow and then you're going to click on import. Now you want to browse all of your files to find the actual file that you want to import. Okay, so here it is. So you found the file and now you want to go ahead and click on next. When you click on next, you're going to come to a screen that, that maps the QuickBooks online field to your spreadsheet. So remember for account number, we had nothing for account number. There was nothing there. So it's telling us that based upon our QuickBooks file, there is a, there is, there is an option to import account numbers. But when the system looks at our spreadsheet file, there is absolutely no match. And there is no match because we don't have any account numbers in there, which is fine. We don't want a match. Now the detail type, remember we talked about the detail type, which means absolutely nothing. However, even though it means nothing, you have to have something in that field. Then we have the account name. The account name is what we want. Booth rental income, color, highlights, um, education, equipment, all of those accounts. And then of course, there is the type, which is telling you what type of account is it? Is it an income account or is it an, ex or is it an expense account? So all of that is okay. All the boxes are checked. So now we just go ahead and we click on next. Okay, so this is all of the data that is coming from the spreadsheet. Everything looks fine. Oh, with the exception, as a matter of fact, with the exception of th this detail type, for some reason, it's telling me that there is a problem here. So that means that I need to, so if I try to import, all of the fields are going to go through with the exception of this one. So let's just go, before I make the correction, let's go ahead and, and import. So we've imported it. And there are actually two, we have two errors. One error is other primary income. So I'm not quite sure why this is a problem, but we can click on there and we can see, let's see detail type. Let's look for other primary income. Oh, the reason why it's a problem is because current assets is a balance sheet account and it is not an a um, profit and loss account. So other primary income is going to ordinarily go on your profit and loss statement. 
Well, other current assets and petty cash is a balance sheet account. That's the reason why we have this error. So what we need to do is we need to find a balance sheet account for this particular transaction. So we're going to put it in other current assets. So here is current other current assets. We'll just click on that. So it should go through. And then the account name. There's a problem with the account name. And I'm not sure what the problem is, but as I clicked in it, it turned green. So let's go ahead and try to import these two and see what happens. Okay, we're still having a problem with commissions. Let's try removing the S and see if that works. Okay, so that worked. So what that tells me is that there's another account in QuickBooks Online with the name commissions. And that's the reason why it wasn't coming through because it will not bring in the name of an account that already exists. So let's look for commission and see what happened. Okay, so here it is. Commissions already existed. So when I removed the S, it went ahead and came through. So basically, that's how you import a chart of accounts from a spreadsheet into QuickBooks Online. And let me just say this before I go. Now, I know I explained to you that the detail part of QuickBooks Self-Employed doesn't really mean much of anything, but let me, let me go ahead and, and backtrack with that. Even though it's not really necessary, you can actually just rely on account name. I will say that with the detail account, sometimes there is information within the detail type that does properly represent the type of account that you are trying to create. So under those circumstances, if you, if you flip through detail type and you see an account that you would like to use as part of your chart of accounts, you could include the name under detail type and then you can include the exact same name under account name. So what I'm going to do when you download this spreadsheet, I am going to go into QuickBooks Online and I'm going to look for all of the accounts under detail type that correspond with anything over here under account name. So then instead of having everything to represent other business accounts, I am going to change that from other business accounts to something that's a little bit more representative. For example, as you can see, I already changed the information up here. It was other business income, but instead I changed it to service fee income. Now, even though I changed it to service fee income, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because on your financial statement, you're still only going to see what's under the account name. But I just wanted to let you know that detail type isn't necessarily a complete throwaway. It does serve its purpose, but you just have to know when to use it, okay? If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on social media or you can send me an email.